Byron Sanders is the president and CEO of Big Thought, an education nonprofit serving 150,000 K through 12 children across Dallas. For more than 30 years, the organization has aimed to empower youth, many from low income families or marginalized communities. But when the pandemic hit back in March, Sanders questioned his ability to continue that work. It's seared in my brain when we went to shelter in place. Before the pandemic, Big Thoughts programs were in person and interactive, including after school and summer programs on campuses and other places like the Texas State Fair. They had never halted operations, but in a matter of days, it had to completely rethink how it would move forward. We were, quite frankly, redesigning ourselves as we went through this. As shelter in place orders went into effect across the state and businesses shut down, Big Thought sent out a short questionnaire asking for families' concerns. More than 1,100 responded. Safety was at the top of that list, followed by academic progress and financial stress. Another takeaway 65% of respondents were essential and healthcare workers who had to be on the front lines. So Big Thought wanted to help those families first by obtaining an emergency license to open a childcare facility in Dallas's medical district. One of the things that's come from uh, coronavirus is it has spurred us to be more thoughtful and innovative in, in how we meet the moment for our families. Big Thought then turned to its student programs. We recognize we're gonna have to find digital solutions. We're also gonna have to find solutions that involve a socially distanced in-person model, and we're gonna have to have hybrid. Access to technology was already a problem for many of the students, only worsened by the pandemic. The digital divide has reared its head as uh, one of those things that separates the haves from have-nots. And communities of color, largely from concentrated poverty areas, are the ones who are most at risk of not being able to be connected. Big Thought leaned on the support of 700 other organizations and corporate sponsors, a $200,000 donation from Boeing, and a fund called Neighborhood Resource Initiative made it possible to purchase computers and other technology for families. It was definitely engaging, and it still is, and also it sparked creativity. I got to learn about financial literacy, cybersecurity, doing the arts and crafts, going to visit the Grand Canyon. It was really fun. I haven't visited the Grand Canyon online before, so <laughs> it was pretty amazing. There is a world ahead of us where they don't need nonprofits like Big Thought, because when we reach that world, that means that there are no more marginalized young people. So until that day comes, organizations like ours will be necessary. The pandemic has brought more than just operational changes to Big Thought. Enrollment is down in its programs and donations can be dependent on the economy, which means money can be an even bigger issue if this pandemic persists. And then there's the question of evaluating the success of what they're doing now. They are in the process of putting together 2019 and 2020 data, and they're putting that information together in a report. They usually do that from year to year, and that report is ready in October. That information and data will help them know how to make adjustments to continue serving their community. Mm -hmm.